Hello, everybody. This is Laura Lamary, and today I have Lynn and Jean, and they're from St. Louis, Missouri. So I love it because it's one of my old turfs when I got started in real estate investing. And I want them to share with you a little bit about their background, why they got interested in real estate, and what happened for them to really say, you know, we're going to jump into this both feet, because I think a lot of you can relate to that, right? You maybe have thought about getting real estate for a long time and then you've tried and maybe you got discouraged at one point and that's normal. You know, it's a, it's a journey that all of us take with the ups and downs and getting in the business. Very few of us get into real estate and succeed at the first try. So I wanted to have Lynn and Jean share with you a little bit their story. And so thanks for being here today. Glad okay. to be here. Thank nice you for asking. Okay, great. So you're a very inspirational to um, me and a lot of the students as well. So I wanted you to kind of share with everybody else out there. So tell me a little bit more about, you know, first of all, um, why were you interested in real estate? What happened in your life that you say, you know, we need to look into this? Uh, for me, I had some renovations done on my home about 21 years ago. Uh, it was a major renovation, and uh, while the whole process was taking place, I became more and more interested. I wanted to know how they were taking the roof off, how were they putting the roof on. It was exciting. It was very, very exciting, and to go pick out things and put them in the house, uh, I just kind of caught the bug, actually. It was very motivating for me, very exciting. Uh, I didn't look at it as, uh, oh, God, hurry up, get out of here. It was, <laughs> I felt like it was the beginning of something. And I kept in touch with the construction company, actually, that did the work and ended up working for them part time as a result. Oh, good. And then since that experience, though, have you done any other deals? Uh, yes. Uh, Jean and I together have done two fix and flips. We did a very high-end fix and flip and uh, more of a uh, normal fix and flip, I would call it. Both were fantastic experiences. The, the high-end, we ended up losing money because we didn't have the right mentor, such as Laura and Liz. Uh, the second one, we were much more successful because we took it we took control of it ourselves and we knew price points, selections, what we had to do. So coming off of that big high end fix and flip, we quickly realized where we needed to spend our money and how much. Right. And sometimes to do high end uh, fix and flips, you know, you people don't take consideration that is a lot more money because obviously with the buyers buying higher end, they expect higher end features. And that can definitely very quickly put you over budget, you know. So that's one of the things that I always say people, be very careful that you get into higher end, especially when you're starting out. Um, and so now go moving forward 20 years, you decided, or even, you know, a little less than 20 years because we've known each other for a little while, but then you decided to jump into real estate pretty much full time. And what was the decision factor that said, you know, we need to really do this now? Uh, for me personally, I was part owner of a uh, packaging materials company. Uh, it was a small company, but we did about $14 million in sales every year. It was a 24-7 job. Uh, it, being an owner, you have a responsibility to all aspects of the business, and it is quite demanding. It was, you know... 10 to 12 hour days, weekends, it just never stopped. There was hardly a time to take a vacation because there was nobody to fill your position. Right. Um, being 61 years old, I thought, you know, I just, I'm young enough that I can do something else. I thought that I was in a position to be able to retire and start doing fix and flips. I loved it. It's all I thought about. It was just Again, it was something that was exciting. And my other business became more of a um, drudgery. So right. I 
I decided it was time to make the change and was willing to jump into it and with both feet. So, right. Yeah, I was talking yesterday in a Facebook Live that sometimes you get to the point in your life where, you know, you just cannot do this anymore, whatever you're doing, a corporate job. And, and even me, I was in real estate part time for several years and I was working corporate. But then I got one day I was like, why am I even here anymore? You know, like you said, you are never, the, the time is never your own. You're really mm -hmm. working for somebody else and they dictate what you do, when you do it, right? So the thing is, it's really not giving you any freedom like, and you cannot even take off. And so I was like, I don't want somebody to own the rest of my life. And that's why for me it was a pivoting factor and why I looked at real estate because not only gives you the freedom, but also the money to enjoy the freedom, right? <laughs> so that's the thing, you know? So that's definitely why I love real estate. And, um, and so, and Eugene are still working, right? Um, very part-time. And I have a career in nursing, mm -hmm. in a holistic nursing. Right. And Lynn, you know, she shared her passion for wanting to get into real estate. And knowing the success that she was in, a, in her own business, I thought, I want to be on part of this. <laughs> so I um, went and got my real estate license and probably about five years ago in preparation to be able to have access to the MLS to um find properties so I, I did that but again I think Lynn has been pretty much the reason why I came into this business but the other side is I've always worked for someone and I've always lived paycheck to paycheck and I was just wanting to have more financial freedom and also freedom of time I was nearing retirement and I thought what can I do that will be fun and um be part of something that I would enjoy as a, a retirement plan. Right. That's why I got into it. And, and you're bringing up both of you a good point that, you know, a lot of people don't realize that real estate is a business. You're not judged on where you are in your life, your age or anything else. I had uh, students I work with, the oldest one I work with was 89 years old. And, uh, um, he wanted to get into real estate. Actually, that was in St. Louis. And then I had another lady in the uh, later 80s. I think she was 87. And then I had several right now in their 70s. Um, so it's one of those businesses, it doesn't matter where you are in your life, you can get started, you know. And, and because you start seeing the rewards so fast, it's very appealing because like somebody in their 70s or 80s, you know, they do that to supplement their retirement income or their social security. So they need to see results and they don't have a lot of money to invest. Or, or, you know, risk, is, I would say. And so that's why real estate it has a lot of different strategies that you can do that. So we both of you looking at retirement and say, you know, I look at real estate as a way, it's really smart because it's one of those things that are never gonna go out of style. You know, it's always a business that's gonna support you. And the thing is, it's calculated risk. If you do things in a certain way and you calculate it, you don't overexpose too much, you know, your resources, you're totally fine. You make money more than you would do with anything else, you know? So it's, it's, it's really good that you bring that point with a lot of people that maybe are a little older like us and uh, think maybe, you know, I need to, maybe I'm risking it too much. No, you just have to calculate the risk and you can make money right away. That's great. So what do you say your biggest mistake um, was when you got started and also, uh, you know, what did you learn from it? Well, most importantly, joining the wrong program. Uh, it became quite obvious uh, almost immediately that uh, it became more of a money grab than an education program. Mm -hmm. and as I had told you previously, uh, going to a luncheon and meeting you and Liz, I became very regretful very quickly that I had joined this other program. Um, coming to the decision that your, the impression that you made on me, I shared with Jeannie and said, I've got to join. I have to join this program. I think this is the one uh, because we were both at a very difficult time. We just didn't know whether we should continue or just get out of it. Right. I remember you sharing that. Yeah. Because obviously you already spent so much money 
with no results. Right. And would you say that these 20 years, you know, you did a couple of deals, but would you say that the, the 20 years you really didn't jump into real estate was because you didn't know what to do, really do, or the steps or who to ask? Do you think that was uh, one of the factors? Absolutely. I had joined forces with one of my ex-business partners and we bought two rental properties. Mm -hmm. It was, we did everything incorrectly. Um, we were constantly being bothered by the tenants. We weren't getting the right tenants. Uh, we weren't making money. Uh, we ended up selling our properties. One we lost money on, the other one we came out okay. So leaving that, I didn't have a wonderful impression of real estate, but again, still, uh, I just kept thinking about fix and flip, fix and flip. I love it. I want to do it. I am determined to do it. I just had to find the right program. So, right. yeah, I mean, like I say, you know, you can do it on your own. You know, it's like when I started in real estate back in the eighties, there were no mentors back then. So pretty much you bought some books and figured it out. But it took me about eight years to really get to the point where I felt comfortable that I could rely on real estate instead of a job. And um, because, you know, it wasn't consistent. I would make good money, but then things would happen. I would lose the money. Then I make good money. Lose so I wasn't really doing consistently to support myself. But and so when I, it took me eight years, you know, without a mentor where I can expedite the same eight years and give somebody their tools in six months to a year to do the same that took me eight years or longer to, uh, to happen. And the other thing is when you are dealing with property, especially distressed situation, I was talking to a student this morning, you know, very complicated situation. She has this beautiful opportunity where she's gonna make $50,000 out of this deal. But the thing is, thinks that, you know, the property is going in bankruptcy. Uh, she has to deal with a bankruptcy attorney right now. She has to understand the issues within the title. And so, you know, to be able to talk to somebody and say, what should I do? You know, the seller is willing to, for me to do the property. I can make 50K out of this deal. And she can't really ask the attorney because the attorney is representing the seller. So the thing is, is that where should I go with this? So to have somebody you can bounce ideas and tell her, I told her exactly what she needs to do. You know, now she's going to make 50K. So that's, yeah, that's, I wish I had that in the beginning when I started where, you know, I didn't have the opportunity. Yeah, I would ask real estate agents and so forth, but a lot of the time their information was not something I needed for that particular deal. So yeah, definitely. So what is the three best tips of advice you would give for somebody or for a woman that wants, first of all, to transition out maybe of her current job or, um, you know, into real estate? Is something you can think about, uh, you know, from your own experience? Uh, well, first and foremost is join the right program. Uh, I personally think that uh, women trying to get in business should work with other women. There's just a different, a different vibe, a different force, a different, it's just um, a confidence builder. You don't feel like you are trying to be somebody else. You are trying to be yourself and the best of yourself. So mm -hmm. I think that is paramount. Uh, Jean? Yeah, I think for me, um, this has been a real journey getting in, go, switching my careers from nursing into real estate. It's been a real journey for me. Not having a steady paycheck also has been a journey for me. And um, your program focuses a lot on mindset. And um, that has been so important for me because I've had to do a lot of uh, self healing and just get into the mindset that. First of all, I can attract the money and that I can make the money in this business. I don't have to rely on uh, someone else, an employer to pay me. So, and just about letting go um, and trusting in the universe that, you know, right. it's gonna be provided. So I have really, really worked hard. And with your program, you always bring that to the forefront, which is so important for me because I have struggled. It's, it's, I think it's been a, a, a it takes a lot of hard work and mentally it takes a lot of hard work and mm -hmm. your program has really helped me through that. So I uh, thank you. 
Well, thank, thank you for sharing that. It's funny, yesterday I was talking to this guy who was uh, really wants me to coach him. And I was like, why, you know, and he came from the women's side. And I was like, why do you want me to coach you? You know, and you came from the women's side. It's because he says, I trust women more in this business and they're smarter. I was like, okay, yeah. So that's a good answer. So, so, you know, and I have a lot of men coming to me and they, that's the comment I get. I trust women more in this business, you know, to help me to really break through. So it's interesting that I hear that. So what are you working on right now? I know you've done a wholesale deal recently and I know you're doing some other deals and uh, are you doing any fix and flip right now? Or are you doing wholesaling mainly? Uh, no, we're still searching for the right fix and flip. We'd love to get back into it, but uh, we have found uh, recent success with our wholesaling, uh, doing a lot of driving for dollars, doing a lot of you know cold calling, uh, trying to be as consistent as possible with that. That is absolutely the key. Uh, but our fix and flips are out there and we're excited to get started and doing transitioning into those more and more. Okay, great. Yeah, no, and that's what I say to people, you know, keep wholesaling and fix and flip hand to hand, you know, even if you don't want to concentrate or focus on wholesaling, I totally understand, like me right now, I'm more interested in fix and flips, but, you know, if the deals that come to me are not the right deal for me to do a fix and flip and it's too much work or something I really don't want to tackle, then I wholesale it and I still make money, you know, so Keep that in mind for everybody that even if you're interested in buying hold as your main strategy, but you know, it's, you come across properties that do not fit your criteria, you can always wholesale them and still make money. So keep your options open so that you never leave money on the table. Yes. So great. Okay. So great. I know you guys are doing tremendously well. So I'm so happy and excited for you. And one of the things you said is a consistency, right? To really do things and do <laughs> things and plow along. Um, that's anybody, when I talk to successful past students or anybody I talk to, there is this focus, this determination, this consistency, this hunger to say, I'm going to do this and I know I can do it. And this expectation of it. And you see that in the face of all the students, you know, that even the past ones that I keep in touch with, I was talking yesterday with Tyrone from St. Louis, with Jimmy and Patricia, with Don, and we have this mastermind where we talk once a month, and the, the, their determinations, their excitement in their voice and what they're accomplishing is uh, really what is, uh, you know, bringing them, taking them forward into the next level. So I appreciate your input in this. Do you have anything you want to leave last? What is something that really you know, beside the mentorship, <laughs> but what is something that's really changed? I, one of the things I always say is you need to change your habits to really get things in your life, you know, where you want them to be. So is anything different that has changed with you the last couple of years since you started really doing this? Uh, for me, it's, um, I guess, being a business partner with uh, three men, uh, for 30 years, I had to always feel as though I had to get their approval on everything. Right. I'm my own boss. I'm it. I do not have to answer to anybody. Well, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, and that's the thing, right? You have to make this mind shift of saying, and that's why I was writing about yesterday, how to transition from a job to being your own entrepreneur. It doesn't matter if it's real estate or any business, you have to really have this mindset shift that now, you know, you're on your own boss, you're dependent on yourself and is a really great freedom, but also sometimes people have hard time with this too. So you have to really adapt to it and take the time to do that. But consistency, like going back to that consistency and focus, you know, and treat this as a job, right? Treat this, this is a business. You need to pencil in that every day from this time to this time, you're going to do something, especially in the beginning until you get things going. Then you can start delegating. You can help our, our people step in along the way. But in the beginning, you really have to set the schedule, especially if you're used to have a schedule. And in some instances, during your process, I mean, there are high times and low times and the low times you just, you know, uh, I guess you kind of fake it till you make it. You just right. keep at it. You do not stop. You continue on and be very consistent. 
watching your programs, uh, your instruction videos, everything. If you're going to be in a program, jump in and, and be in at yeah. percent. You will come out better on the other side. Right. And one of the things that I also always say and bring out to people like you, you guys are on the calls almost all the time. You're really taking participation in the group. You know, you're really on top of things. And the, any of the students I looked in the past that were really the one that made it and broke through big time are the ones that were very focused. They were present on all the calls, even the ones that they didn't have any ask any questions. They just were there to hear what everybody else. You keep your mind into that focus that is going to get your breakthrough. So like I said, and, and even now with the past students that I do these masterminds every month, I have a student that used to be a student of mine like seven years ago, and he still and he jumps into this mastermind because to have this type of commitment in focus, you know, he still draws from the fact of being around the group of like-minded people and talk about where he is, you know, in his uh, business career or in his real estate career. So definitely participate in your groups, in your calls, you know, and everything, get everything out of it, absorb as a sponge. And then you're around like-minded women that will help you to move forward. So that's very important. Yes. Great. Well, thanks everybody for taking the time here today to share with me your story. I think it's very important for other women to be inspired and to understand that there are other women out there that have gone through their journey. And, uh, you know, it's always good to hear different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Thank so you thanks a lot for taking the time. All right. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye.